have Melanie also. Can you hear us, Melanie? I guess you can raise your hand. <laughs> oh, there, I don't know how we do that. I see Melanie's on here and Eric's on here too. Um, but I don't see a microphone for either of you. If you want to um, make sure your microphone is equipped. Yeah, they're on, but they're, they're just. Okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, phones. I think if you log, uh, oh, there we go. Eric's on the phone, but he has it un. But you have to uh, you you need to unmute yourself. I don't know how to do that on the phone. It's uh, star six. Star six, Eric. I'm unmuted. Yay. All right, great. <laughs> uh, and then Melanie, um, I can see she's on, so she's trying to figure it out. Is that you typing, Eric? Yes, I'm sorry. Okay. Just when we're doing the rest of it, we might have you mute yourself. I mean, you could probably just mute on your phone, so you don't necessarily have to do the, Star you know, it. yeah. Let me, I want to try to mute it here just to make sure it works. We can't hear you if you're talking, so. Great. I was, yeah. Excellent. Great. Now if we can just get Melanie. So Melanie, if you can hear us, there should be on your screen uh, a sidebar that has the names of the people who are on the call. And I think you can either call in with the number that's on the calendar invite, or you can click through to be um, on the Zoom on your computer and you just have your microphone unmuted when you are on. Maybe I need to look at my email if you're trying to get a hold of us. Okay, we ha I have a message that Melanie, oh, Melanie's got, she's there. So Melanie, if you want to unmute your microphone and just test it out. Can you hear me? Yes. Is it clear enough or do, should I call in? No, it sounds perfect. Okay. Yeah, so perfect. We've got everybody on the call. Um, I think the only thing we need now is what looks like, Ed, you've, uh, you're, you've taken over the, the view of whatever is being projected out, correct? That's correct. Okay, so when we go to the slides, you'll be able to. I feel like we're at mission control when <laughs> if I have video. Hello. <laughs> and you know, we might, I kind of, I feel like it might be okay if we just have that. I can speak without being on camera because the, the things that I'm talking about are basically part of the slides. Okay. Yeah. And then we don't have to be all self-conscious about, are you on your phone? What are you doing? <laughs> okay.
Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to the SCAG traffic safety webinar, uh, session number three. Today we're going to be talking about uh, educate and encourage through SCAG's Go Human campaign. It's September 18th, 2019 at two o'clock two in the afternoon. Uh, SCAG is a uh, the Southern California Association of Governments, and they are federally a metropolitan planning organization, a state regional transportation planning agency, and also a local council of governments. SCAG encompasses six regions and 191 cities, covering 38,000 square miles, and SCAG develops long-range regional transportation plans. That's a little bit about SCAG, and I want to kickstart this webinar by talking to you a little bit about why traffic safety is important. As you can see from this graphic uh, on traffic safety statistics in the overall SCAG region, an average of 1,500 people are killed. 5,200 are seriously injured and 136,000 are injured in traffic collisions each year. And while pedestrians and cyclists make only 12% of all trips, they accounted for 27% of those killed in collisions throughout the region. If you're interested in traffic safety statistics for your county, you can access those fact sheets uh, in the link below. And we'll be sending all of this information out to you as well. And just for a little bit of housekeeping uh, as we jump into the webinar today, we have our speakers uh, speaking to us remotely. You'll be seeing their slides, uh, which will be available after the webinar uh, on the GoHuman website. Um, we will be going through all of the slide presentations, and then at the end, we'll have some time for Q&A. And if you're on uh, the computer Zoom, you can uh, raise your hand or ask a question and we'll be able to uh, answer those questions um, from the from where we are monitoring the webinar this all started off uh, earlier this year with some workshops that some of you may have attended uh, we went to four regions of southern california and spoke with agency pr practitioners and employees who work for cities and for community-based organizations talking about how people, how each of you can improve traffic safety in your region. The day was spent with expert speakers and then an afternoon of a workshop where everybody got to put together a work plan. And what we learned from these uh, and these city agencies is that their, their interest in learning more about efforts to educate the public about reducing traffic collision as well as encouraging people to bike and walk more. So education is a big part of making any traffic safety plan work. We have a great group of speakers today. We have Juliana Lippi-Klein, who is an associate regional planner for SCAG. 
Alexis Lance is a policy analyst for the Los Angeles County Department of Public Health. Melanie Mullis is a principal planner for the transportation and for transportation and mobility from the city of Ontario, and uh, Eric Seha, principal planner for the city of Palm Desert. And each of these individuals has participated in educational outreach, uh, and they'll be able to share some insight with you. So we'll first start off with a brief overview of SCAG's Go Human campaign, and then we'll hear from those speakers who actually led the efforts in their local jurisdictions uh, and participated with partners to put on one of the educational campaigns. And then we'll end with a Q&A session. So we'll first hear from Julia Lippi Klein. Hello, good afternoon. This is Julia. I'm a planner at SCAG and I'm going to provide an overview of some of the nuts and bolts of the Go Human campaign, SCAG's primary active transportation safety and encouragement program. So I'll touch on the objectives of the campaign, discuss available resources that we have in-house, and then also provide a short overview of uh, funding opportunities. So the Go Human campaign um, really aims to increase rates of active transportation, reduce greenhouse gases, uh, improve public health, reduce the number of collisions that are happening, support the ATP and other active transportation investments, and generally change the reputation of the region. So I'm going to talk about four different buckets of resources that we have at SCAG. Uh, the regional advertising campaign, opportunities for co-branded materials, temporary demonstration resources, and the Go Human Challenge programming materials. So I'll start with a little background on the regional advertising campaign. This has been happening for about four years now. Um, it covers the entire region, all six counties, um, and the campaign is created in a way um, that it provides a cohesive message um, across the region, but there's flexibility to respond to the region's diverse communities and needs um, and reflect those diverse populations. Um, to date, we've secured over half a billion impressions. Uh, the creative is message tested. It's informed by hotspot analysis of sweaters collision data um, and informed by stakeholders. So the value of the campaign is really that we've done the hard work, um, all of the research, and we make it available to jurisdictions across the region to roll out. Um, about 20% of residents in SCAG recognize the ads and about 80% of residents find the ads to be motivating. Um, so this campaign um, is seen on billboards, transit shelters, gas pump tops, convenience store sheets, um, and then it could be heard on the radio um, and then also digitally through social media. In terms of co-branding opportunities, um, we provide this as a resource to jurisdictions and partners uh, through funding from the Office of Traffic Safety. Uh, these are sort of a different scale of outreach um, where we will develop our ads on things like lawn signs or banners, postcards, um, and uh, give opportunities for cities to co-brand it. Um, we will take care of the graphics, the printing, and the shipping, and then um, partners will uh, place those throughout the community. Um, this has been really successful alongside back to school efforts um, or alongside uh, walk to school month activities. So the third resource that I wanna talk about um, are our educational programming materials. Um, we call this the Go Human Challenge. Uh, these materials really enhance community engagement and educational impact. Um, these are modules that expand active transportation messaging and highlight sustainability topics. There are five modules. They each have a different theme and a fun interactive activity. Uh, they're free to borrow um, across the region um, and they're really successful if paired with existing events and programming. 
So this is just an overview of the topics um, and the associated activities. There's climate resiliency, transportation safety, environmental responsibility, new mobility, and public spaces. So these are just a few photos of what these modules look like. Uh, street mix is at the top. It's really an opportunity for residents to identify uh, what their ideal street could look like with these movable pieces. Um, at the bottom is tic-tac-toe, in the middle oversized dice, and to the right there's a stationary bike that's associated with um, transportation safety trivia. On the previous slide there was an oversized puzzle um, with even more trivia. And finally, the fourth resource that we provide um, is temporary demonstration resources through the kit of parts. Um, temporary demonstrations are really important to support planning efforts. They create opportunities to test out native, needed and innovative designs. Um, it's an opportunity to conduct community outreach and collect feedback on projects. Um, that feedback can be used to develop support, cultivate champions, refine designs, and strengthen um, any future funding applications. So SCAG's kit of parts um, is essentially a lending library for materials uh, to support with these demonstration projects. On the right-hand side is an example of what one of the five design treatments look like. This is a parklet. Um, that's flush with the curb. This is showcased at a previous Ciclavia. Um, the five design treatments are available to borrow and showcase. We have parklets, pedestrian refuge island, protected bike lane, um, and uh, bulb outs, curb extensions, among others. Um, so these are paired with an existing event um, as an opportunity to conduct community outreach. Um, and the materials are available to partners across the region, um, and they come with a survey tool as well as educational signage, which you can see in the photo. A couple more examples. This is a rendering of the bulb out, which is available. The pieces fit together easily like Legos. Um, so um, compared with past iterations of SCAG's Go Human demonstration projects, um, these are far more easier to um, transport, roll out, set up, install, and then take down. Oh, and there's a, uh, we have an artistic crosswalk as well. So I wanted to break out the SCAG resources and grant opportunities into a couple different buckets. Uh, SCAG resources um, is the first column, those four items I just discussed, and grant opportunities, there's three opportunities to highlight. Um, beyond what we provide in-house. There's opportunities through the Sustainable Communities Program. Within that program, um, there have been funding opportunities for infrastructure demonstration projects, um, longer term projects, uh, 30 days to several months. Uh, we call those quick builds. Um, it's really an opportunity to showcase for longer than a day or two, um, something that you really wanna collect feedback on, refine and showcase to the community. Um, sustainable community program applications and workshops are slated for fall 2020. Um, there's opportunities for funding through ATP cycle five um, for 2020. Um, and all of this uh, should be noted as uh, draft dates. Um, and then finally, a smaller opportunity, but important to note um, are our local community engagement mini grants. Um, these are really great opportunities for a nonprofit um, to identify a community outreach idea, uh, whether something educational um, or a demonstration project, something arts-based or creative, um, to propose to SCAG um, and roll out a project um, with a smaller budget. So I'll leave it at that um, and we'll uh, take questions at the end. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move on to our next speaker, Alexis Lance from the LA County Department of Public Health. 
Hi, I'm super excited to have this opportunity to speak with everyone today about how Los Angeles County Department of Public Health, along with our partners, Los Angeles County Public Works, have utilized resources made available through the SCAG Go Human program to support county efforts to enhance traffic safety, especially for pedestrians. Uh, specifically, we've utilized SCAG resources to assist with a pedestrian planning effort for several of our unincorporated communities and um, with the county's Vision Zero initiative. So several years ago, um, Public Health secured a Cycle 1 ATP uh, Active Transportation Program grant from the state to develop pedestrian plans for four unincorporated LA County communities that are identified here on the map on the slide. Um, these four communities from four of the five LA County supervisorial districts met the state's qualification in terms of disadvantaged status for planning uh, funding. And as part of our grant, we stated we would utilize existing PED uh, traffic safety materials developed by another jurisdiction to run in our focus communities during our planning period. We had originally considered using a campaign from the DC area. However, um, SCAG had also received an ATP Cycle One grant um, that helped jumpstart their Go Human effort, and they invited us to serve on the steering committee for the development of the first Go Human ad campaign, which timed nicely with our planning effort. So for the development of step-by-step -step Los Angeles County pedestrian plans for unincorporated communities, we utilized SCAG resources in three ways. We re-ran the pedestrian safety oriented ads from the first SCAG Go Human ad campaign in bus shelter spaces located in um, our focused communities, um, helping us reach people driving and walking with pedestrian safety messages in the same places where we were talking with community members about where they want to see pedestrian and safety improvement. So the photo shown here on the slide um, was actually from one of the walk audits we conducted with residents and this little girl was a participant on our walk audit team um, and you can see her out there where the bus shelter ad is. We were also able to get lawn signs from SCAG with safety messages and distribute them at um, community meetings that either we hosted or that we attended that were organized by community members, such as PTA meetings, things like that. Folks would typically clean us out of the lawn signs at each event um, uh, because everyone has concerns about traffic safety on the streets in their neighborhood, and this gave them something to bring home and help promote traffic safety to their neighbors. The third way that uh, we utilized SCAG resources was um, through doing a demonstration project. We applied for and received a technical assistance grant from SCAG to host a, dem a demonstration project in one of our four PED plan communities. With this planning effort, we worked hard to go where a community already convenes rather than asking them to come to, to us. We did this in a number of different ways, but what's relevant for today's discussion is the demonstration project where we, we came out into the street to engage with residents. Um, with strong support from uh, Supervisor Hilda Solis, we worked with SCAG and Public Works to host this demonstration project in Walnut Park along Pacific Boulevard over about a, about a mile long distance. And this was to enable community members to directly interact with the temporary version of proposed improvements from the pedestrian plan that had been identified by community members during our outreach efforts to develop the draft plan. This gave residents and businesses uh, the opportunity to come out and experience and immediately provide feedback to the project team on what was demonstrated. And so this shows, our slide here shows some of the images from the event, Camina and Walnut Park. Um, some of the interventions demonstrated were a scramble crosswalk, a parking protected multi-use path, curb extensions, high visibility crosswalks. Um, so all of these things were either came from our pedestrian plan or a previously developed plan done by our County Department of Parks and Recreation for the area. So, and then on the next slide, a um, little bit more from the Walnut Park project. As you can see from the slide uh, here, that there's strong support from attendees for the proposed projects that were demonstrated. Um, in addition, we reach people that don't typically come to county meetings, um, highlighting the value of doing this type of effort. Roughly 800 people experienced the demonstration projects and 151 surveys were collected. And of those, 70% of the people who completed the survey had never attended a community meeting hosted by the county to discuss transportation. So this really was a great way of getting out and engaging with folks about what they wanna see in their street 
Because there are a lot of people who just can't make it to community meetings or, you know, even though we were going to PTA and other meetings, you're just not going to reach everybody um, without doing something right out in the community. So I'm pleased to share that step-by-step -step LA County um, received unanimous support. It was adopted by the board this summer and several residents from Walnut Park who helped participate in the demonstration project came to the hearing to speak in favor of its adoption. Um, and are continuing to work in their community on some safe routes to school efforts. So um, one of the other ways we've been engaging with SCAG and utilizing the resources they are able to provide is for the county's Vision Zero initiative. In 2017, we were instructed by the County Board of Supervisors to work with Public Works to co-lead the development of a Vision Zero initiative for the unincorporated areas of Los Angeles County. We developed a Vision Zero action plan that's going to be submitted to the board this fall, and the plan identifies the county's collision concentration corridors or high injury network, which you can see on the map on the slide. Um, the collision concentration corridors are the 3.7% of county maintained roads, about 125 miles, where 50% of all fatal and severe injury collisions occurred during a five year period. The plan also uh, identifies action the county will take to change policies, systems, and the environment to eliminate fatal and severe injury collisions. One of the actions is to develop and implement a multimedia communications campaign to change culture. As we know, this approach can work because the field of public, of public health has led successful um, change to public perception around cal uh, smoking in California. Through policy change and impactful marketing campaigns, public health activities helped reduce smoking by 51% between 1988 and 2014. And today, California has the second lowest adult smoking prevalence rate in the United States at just 12%. So this is the same type of change that we need to make to address speeding, DUI, distracted driving, hit and runs, and other unsafe road behaviors that contribute to fatal and severe injury collisions. We need to create empathy and make people aware of other roadway users. So thankfully, SCAG has continued to make resources available, and we re-ran re the latest version of the SCAG Go Human campaign this September with a focus on school safety. Um, so we identified schools that were within a quarter mile of our collision concentration concentration corridors to target with messaging. Public Works was able to identify 35 county operated bus shelters where school oriented go human messages could be installed in close proximity to these schools. As you can see here on the slide, there's a picture and you can actually see the reflection of a bus um, in the ad. Um, I reached out to schools um, I reached out to all of the schools and several community-based organizations um, within a quarter mile of our collision concentration corridors. And we had eight schools and three community groups request materials, helping us distribute over 8,700 postcards and 1,000 lawn signs to parents um, at back to school events and community meetings across seven unincorporated communities this September. So we wanna work with jurisdictions um, around LA County and beyond to continue to coordinate on the development of traffic safety multimedia campaigns because people traverse multiple jurisdictions every day for work, school, and errands, and these traffic safety issues don't just stop at the border of one jurisdiction. So we're hoping to continue to work with SCAG and with everyone in the region to, to, to figure out how we can continue to work on doing um, these types of campaigns. So one other way we've utilized SCAG resources is um, SCAG also has put together some really handy um, bike ped and safety, excuse me, bike ped scooter safety tip sheets um, that they make available on their website. So we have been um, printing those out and distributed thing, distributing them um, at events such as Parks After Dark, which is uh, something public health staff are involved in where we provide uh, free bike safety education. Um, and this is during the summer, winter and spring Parks After Dark is a program at, at over 30 county parks, and it's programming that happens Thursday through Saturday evenings, extending park hours to keep kids, families engaged in safe and healthy activities when school is out of session. Um, parks After Dark is an opportunity to reach parents, children, and teens with bike, ped, scooter safety education and to update them about active transportation projects happening or coming to their community. Um, the people we reach through the classes and the info booths don't typically attend public meetings, but they do care deeply about um, seeing traffic safety improvements in their community and ensuring that their children are safe. So we use the Go Human Lawn signs at these events to help um, create a more impactful 
booth and we also give them away and which parents are always happy to take back to their community. Um, so those are just sort of the myriad of ways that we've taken advantage of these free resources. And um, I am happy to answer any questions at the end of the presentations. Thank you, Alexis. Our, our next speaker comes to us from the city of Ontario. Uh, she's a principal planner uh, for mobility, Melanie Mullis. Good afternoon. Um, the city of Ontario uh, was lucky enough to work with SCAG a little over a year ago on a Go Human event. Um, you can go to the next slide. Um, that was part of one of the eight concerts in the park that the city has every year in its downtown um, uh, relatively new park facility. Um, there was, there was approximately two to 3,000 people at the overall event. Um, you can go to the next slide. That was pr primarily intended to uh, focus on potential biking improvements along Euclid Avenue, which is a state route. So we worked uh, diligently with Caltrans on how to move forward with it first of all, a demonstration event, and hopefully eventually an actual improved facility. But as you can see on the um, picture on the left, um, it was intended to be a buffered bike facility that, uh, that riders were able to utilize bicycles that were brought in as part of it. So they didn't need to bring their bicycle. They could try out the, the event um, all the way around. So this was the buffered bike facility where we closed down um, uh, one of the lanes temporarily uh, through the event. You can go to the next slide. In addition, um, they were able to basically work their way around the entire park uh, through sharrows and uh, have temporary sharrow uh, signage um, so that, that they could experience that kind of improvement also. You can go to the next slide. In addition, prior to starting their um, activities along the bike facility, they were given a brief bike education, bike helmet sizing. The police department uh, has an ongoing program of um, youth bike uh, helmet giveaways. And so they were there participating um, in, in that event also. And so the, the, the younger kids were able to, if they had bicycles and didn't have a helmet, they were able to um, take a helmet home with them also. You can go to the next slide. In addition, we were testing out um, curb extension um, potentials at two of the intersections. Um, one on the left was um, done by a, a local artist, obviously uh, giving homage to um, biking in the, in the community. And then the one on the right is, um, because the concert was an Elton John um, tribute band, uh, it's a yellow brick road sort of concept and it was sort of playing off that that kind of theme. You can go to the next slide. In addition, a uh, temporary parklet was um, in installed uh, where people could sit, relax, play some games. There was a cooking demonstration. There was supposed to be a, a Zuma demonstration, but it happened to occur on a really hot day. Uh, in the middle of the fires that were occurring and the fire um, smoke had shifted our direction, um, you know, for many miles away. And so the air quality was not a, a good situation for them to actually do their Zumba demonstration, but that was what was intended. You can go to the next slide. In addition, Skag had their passport stations where they were um, providing uh, opportunities for people to get information about biking and trivia and play some games. Um, they also had um, staff members um, roving the area to gather survey information about the proposed facilities and um, what they felt about those facilities. You can go to the next slide. In addition, I keep saying in addition, I apologize. Um, city staff, uh, had our own booth, um, separate, you know, separate, but as part of the event, um, where we were gathering information on active transportation, active transportation needs in the community. Um, we were slated, and we have begun an active transportation master plan. So it was an opportunity to do a broader survey 
of biking and walking needs in the community. Um, in addition, because this was a Caltrans facility where the improvements are being proposed, Caltrans had a booth uh, where they were able to gather their own information about the community's needs and concerns. Their perspective is slightly different um, and, and because they have a, a broader audience, a more regional audience to, to serve. And so they were interested in, in gathering their own information. I know that they, in, in in my conversations with them, with them, were very impressed with the amount of public input that both they received and we received through the process. And the, a big hurdle for us has been to get Caltrans on board with, with allowing us to make some changes on there right away. You can go to the next slide. So while there was probably about 3,000 people overall at the event, 229 people actually took the formal survey of which they all you know supported the the sidewalk extensions and parklets um, most uh, supported the the bike lanes um, and the you know curbs it was just overall support for for most of the improvements being proposed there were concerns to be honest with you during the event by the police department about um, Ensuring safety, in fact, uh, that portion of, of Euclid Avenue, Safe route, uh, State Route 83, is three lanes. We had proposed to narrow it down to two lanes with no parking, and the police department was not comfortable with that. So they ended up narrowing it one more lane just to make sure there was enough buffer between um, the riders and and where the, the moving traffic was. It ended up working out fine, but it was, you know, that, that you have to move and groove in the, in, the, in the moment sometimes. You could go to the next slide. So one of the questions we were asked what, uh, to, to address was what funding opportunities there have been. We are in ongoing conversations with Caltrans about how to move forward with potential improvements, what Caltrans can potentially agree to. Um, the, the Go Human event has significantly helped us in our discussions with them, and we've seen a lot of movement from them in the last year uh, to try and get support. We're probably not going to get everything that we want, but um, we're getting a lot closer to coming to an agreement about how we can move forward with, with improvements. They have proposed um, many of the improvements um, on the um, such as the curb ball about some parklets and some bike facilities along the, the, this portion of, of Euclid um, through a shop project, but it's not until 2028. We're trying to figure out how to make that happen sooner. Um, we are continuing to work with council uh, to determine what their desired improvements are uh, to, to ensure that we're all um, in sync with each other. You can go to the next slide. So the lessons we learned in the process was um, uh, communicate yeah, early and communicate often. <laughs> um, through the Go Human event, um, I think believe I was recall there were four meetings. That was enough trying to get everybody at the table, um, both internally and externally. Um, um, nonprofits, some local residents who are bicycle advocates. Um, economic development, the media team, um, all getting them at the table to to make sure that we're moving forward in the right direction was was critical for us. Um, this was the first Go Human, and hopefully not the last Go Human event we'll have. We knew that because it was Euclid Avenue, and because of our working relationship and um, with Caltrans, that it was critical that this be a success. And um, we feel it was a resounding success. Um, and a lot of that has to do with, with Julia and, and the KOA team that were able to pull their technical abilities and knowledge that myself as a local you know, planner wouldn't necessarily uh, know all the ins and outs of how to make this happen. You can go to the next slide. I think it's my final slide. Um, it took four to six months to plan, doing concept layouts, some traffic plans, because it was um, a Caltrans facility, we always had to process those, those through Caltrans, getting branding and advertising. The day of the event, there were probably 20 people doing setup and breakdown. 
Um, we had to have support from police, recreation, public works. Um, I'll be honest, I don't know, think we could have done it without the SCAG support and the KOA team. Uh, they were, and I'm not promoting them necessarily, but they were, I do not have the wherewithal, our, our team here does not have the wherewithal to put something like this together. Um, now that we've seen it, maybe we could do a smaller event, but um, we were very happy with, with the kind of input we received, the kind of materials that were available, the outreach that occurred, the engagement of the community was, they were very excited, all our council was really excited. Um, and so in the end, having a Go Human event was um, surprisingly much better than I anticipated. Um, Julia may be, may be kicking me about that one. I, I was I was wary that we would wouldn't get enough people out, that we wouldn't um, get the kind of response we wanted to get. But we were able to do to to do all that, and, and a lot of that's because of Julia and and because of KOA. So um, I would commend anybody to go forward with this kind of opportunity and um, using the kit of parts and and their outreach efforts would would be ideal. So I'm available for any questions at the end also. Thank you, Melanie. Uh, we now will move on to our final speaker uh, who is coming from the city of Palm Desert, uh, Principal Planner, Eric Seha. Yeah, good evening, yeah, good evening everyone. everyone. Uh, this is a project we love to talk about. This is our San Pablo Avenue corridor, and I just want to give you some context of where Palm Desert is uh, for those not familiar, but we're centrally located in Riverside County and centrally located in uh, the Coachella Valley. And if you can get to the next slide. So the city uh, began planning efforts for the San Pablo Corridor back in 2013. Uh, we had a, a community engagement meetings that resulted in a strategic plan. Uh, ultimately, that strategic plan focused on eight areas of the city, including education and art. Um, but one of the big components that came out of it was this desire to create a, a downtown for Palm Desert. The city originated in 1950, uh, but by the time the 80s and 90s came around, uh, the city had developed more into a golf course retirement community. So we had this older part of town that had more of a traditional grid layout, uh, surrounded by golf courses, and then we're trying to find a way, how can we get a, a downtown to develop into the city? Uh, ultimately, that strategic plan led to a general plan uh, amendment, a whole new general plan for the city that really re-emphasized and focused where that downtown should be and specifically identified that San Pablo and Highway 111 should be that epicenter for the downtown. Look at the next slide. And the reason San Pablo was important is that um, it, it leads between two uh, residential neighborhoods into the city's commercial core on Highway 111 and El Paseo. Uh, but then also connects those areas into the Civic Center campus where we have the largest park in the Coachella Valley um, and the Community College, College of the Desert. Um, I'll get the next slide. And so uh, while we were going through our general plan update, uh, we came across the uh, Go Human campaign from SCAG and we put an application in. And what, at the time, we weren't sure exactly what we could do with it. Uh, but we know we wanted to really highlight the change uh, that was envisioned for San Pablo. And the reason we wanted to do that is that the city's really kind of developed into an older uh, retiree kind of town. And anytime we want to try to push the envelope and do something different, we're usually met with a lot of community resistance. And so what we, what we found with SCAG's program is that we could really try this out in a small demonstration and get community feedback and see how comfortable the community was with what was being proposed. And so what I think made our uh, event unique is that we actually did the event for a 10 day period where we narrowed the lanes. Uh, San Paul was a five lane corridor. We narrowed it down to three lanes and we, and we even installed a temporary roundabout at one of our major intersections to see how the community would react with that. Uh, the way that we were able to picture or punctuate it, you can see um, in that center photo, is we actually put out some box trees. Uh, we narrowed the roadway with some cones and then some of the kit of parts that uh, the Go Human campaign was able to provide. And then several days uh, into the 10-day demonstration on the first weekend that we had, 
we held a one day community event where we actually shut down a portion of the street and invited a ton of community partners uh, to come take over the street and really engage with you know what the vision for the corridor would be at uh, the next slide and so uh, may first here you can kind of see this was the actual event that we had uh, luckily for us may is typically a hotter month uh, but we had some great cloud cover uh, some shade and you can see a lot of the, the kit of parts that came uh, from the go human campaign to kind of fill in that space um, at the far end of that photo is one of our major community partners the desert recreation district and having them involved really helped bring the community out and bring out um, actually a younger demographic for us which was uh, great to hear from for the city we'll get the next slide and so this was a, our day of the event we we had been engaged with our own marketing team uh, to do several TV and radio interviews. The newspaper had picked the story up and was really engaged with what the city was proposing uh, because what we were proposing was, was somewhat unique for the Coachella Valley. I mean, we'd be one of the first cities to try this out. And so uh, there was a lot of community engagement and community, uh, uh, we did a lot of community promotion to make sure that hopefully that people would actually come out and enjoy this event. I'll get the next slide. And the day of, you know, what we learned, uh, the way to get people out is to invite their kids, go to the school districts, uh, put the flyers in the backpacks, uh, get the kids involved, and then the parents will follow. And so uh, we were pretty lucky with getting the Desert Rec District out there. Uh, you can see we had Sunline, our local transit agency was engaged, and uh, we had approximately 3,000 people actually attend the event. Uh, this was punctuated not only with demonstrations uh, the desert rec district had put on like the drummers you see there but also with artists there was an artist competition as part of the event where artists came in i think there's about eight of them and they they painted their own vision of what the street could be and at the end of the day there was a small competition on, on who would actually win the art um, but we had great community engagement with this and we had some great community partners uh, like the transit agency um, i'll get the next photo We'll see it that we also had in that bottom left photo and upper left photo. Uh, we had the Palm, Palm Desert Historical Society was engaged in this. We had some lighting so that this event can continue into the evening. Um, we had a, a fantastic turnout for our event. And what we what we really found with the event and what was so helpful with it. <clears throat> I'll get the next slide is that it for Palm Desert. It actually brought out a, de a different demographic for the city that we don't often hear from. Uh, they're not often engaged in, um, you know, the, the politics here at City Hall and the direction of their own community. And that was really a big selling point to the city council. Most of the people that came to the event uh, had heard about it and driven through the street on a weekday and were interested in following up on what the event was actually about. Uh, but we had many more people come directly out of the two neighborhoods that flanked the street and their input was invaluable uh, to staff here as well as the city council on what they wanted for their street. And I think they really helped uh, change the perception of how we thought of San Pablo as this corridor that connected our commercial area to the civic center and park to really what it is, is a neighborhood street. The street was widened in the 80s and, and bifurcated this neighborhood. And the plan today is to actually narrow that street and kind of meld the neighborhood back uh, together. We'll get the next slide. And, and we had a, a fantastic event. Uh, we had over 145 surveys complete with the vast majority of people supporting the vision that we were promoting. Uh, many people bought into the bike lanes that were promoted, um, but really where we found uh, some surprise was that people actually supported the use of the roundabouts. And without living on the street and hearing from the residents themselves in that area, uh, the city was was pretty iffy. Not we weren't too sure about adding roundabouts to the community. They're they're not very common out here, and we weren't sure if the drivers would actually know how to navigate them uh, safely. But what we heard from the residents is uh, the existing four-way stop on the street that people are consistently running through that stop sign or doing their California stops where they don't completely stop; they just run right through it, and if there was a way to actually stop or slow down that traffic, the, the community, the residents, and the, the children in the area, it'd be a much more comfortable space for them. Um, and you can see there's a lot of comments there related to unsafe drivers. We'll get the next slide. And what I want to emphasize with our project, uh, our 
our Vision San Paulo was a, a big community success, and it really helped the council uh, see that this is something worth pursuing. And once the demonstration was complete, uh, internally, uh, we were able to form uh, a working team of various city staff members uh, that included someone from our finance department, uh, many employees from public works, uh, our own marketing team, economic development team, uh, to really kind of engage and work together collaboratively in a way that they've never done before here at City Hall. And why, why I think that was important is it helped continuously to buy in, not only at City Hall, but to show the City Council that there was a lot of effort being put into this street um, because it was something that they wanted to, to execute as well. And you can see that uh, from the beginning slide that the original vision started in 2013, and here we are in 2019 actually breaking ground on the project um, in that bottom right photo. There are several steps uh, from having the initial vision to having a, a Go Human event to getting the project under construction. And I think it just shows there's a lot of patience that you need. You need a project champion, something that can really help support the project out in the community. There's a lot of community engagement that needs to happen, uh, but these things all take time. And if you're, you're consistent and you persevere through some of the challenges, uh, good, good results can happen. We'll get the next slide. And yeah, happy to say, you know, we're actually under construction now. These are photos just taken yesterday of what's happening to the street. Uh, the construction crews are out there. Uh, they are moving utility lines. They're getting ready to pour uh, the first curbs in about two weeks and really highlighting to the community, you know, the changes that are coming to the street. Uh, so we're quite excited about that. This is really just a phase one. Uh, the entire corridor is about a mile and a half. This is about half of that corridor uh, to get you between or through the neighborhood. The second phase, uh, which will begin next summer, is currently being planned, and it's going to uh, also connect into a, a larger regional uh, bikeway project known as CV Link, where we hope to connect into CV Link and create this whole uh, alternative transportation route throughout the Coachella Valley that really gets you right into the center of Palm Desert. So, with the next slide. So some of the lessons that were learned on this, uh, I had mentioned that um, a different demographic that the event had come out really helped us uh, understand the makeup of the immediate neighborhood and what their needs and vision were for their own space and, and their portion of the community. And that um, getting their buy-in and their support uh, has really made the difference in getting this project uh, to where it is today. There is a lot of community engagement, uh, particularly with some of the business owners that need, to be, uh, that need to be had. And if you can find project champions in the business community, it really helps move it along um, with at least our city council is showing that there is support. So um, some of the, the things that are not over yet is we're still developing economic development programs for the corridor, uh, for that small commercial section that we have. We are starting to, um, track some of the investment that's coming in now that the project's underway. And we've actually backdated that since the, about two years ago when the council actually said this was a real project. So we're starting to track over time, um, if the street comes in, what kind of investment comes into the area as well. Because one of our long-term hopes is that we do, if we hit a home run on this project, uh, we have about three or four more streets that we want to start up uh, in the next couple of years. And then, uh, what we had heard because of the roadway improvements that were coming in from the business community was that they were worried about rising rents, getting pushed out, that this would be a much more attractive area. This would not be a place for them to conduct their business anymore. And so we've actually been given direction uh, for a formula uh, business prohibition just for a small core in this part of the city. Um, and then again, like I would mentioned, we're still working on our phase two and connection into CV Link. Uh, but that was also recently uh, passed by the city council just this past week. So I think we've been pretty fortunate in that we have a community that bought into this idea. We had a city council that uh, also was very supportive of this. And I think the internal workings here at City Hall to get a team together to work collaboratively uh, really helped us identify early on what some of the challenges would be, some of the, the issues that would arise in the future and how to think through them. And I think it's just been a great experience with it. And, you know, with that, really without SCAG's Go Human campaign and the event and demonstration that we were able to hold, 
we would not be in the position where we're at today where we're several months into construction on the permanent improvement. So um, I think some of the expectations in working with the Go Human campaign that we had learned is that uh, I don't think there was a blank check, but we never settled on how much money SCAG was actually going to contribute on this. And so I know internally City Hall was a little skeptical on on who is going to contribute what and how it all the event was all going to come together but by the at the end of the day the event really worked out very well we had a phenomenal attendance and got phenomenal uh, community input that has really got the project to where it is so uh, i'm happy to answer any questions you might have on san pablo and palm deserts projects Thank you so much, Eric. Uh, thank you to all of our speakers, uh, to Julia, Alexis, Melanie, and Eric. Uh, we'll go ahead and move into our Q&A session. For those of you who are joining us on the webinar, if you go to the bottom of your screen, uh, there is a, uh, a chat icon. And if you click on that chat icon, uh, at the bottom right of your screen will be a message box. And if you make sure that your messages go to everyone, uh, then you'll be able to ask us a question. And uh, I'll just uh, read those questions off as they appear in the chat box. But I'll start off by asking a question. Um, those of you who have, uh, this might be for Julia more than anybody else, uh, we've seen some really great examples of successful execution of these education uh, pop-ups. Uh, it may be a little uh, intimidating maybe for people who ha aren't as far along. Uh, Julie, what are some ways that people who are interested in doing this in their own community can take the first step and get started? Sure, so I think what's important is for the asks to be in partnership with city staff or county staff or the jurisdiction itself because they'll have the ability to execute something like this. Um, but if it's coming from um, a nonprofit or a school district, um, I think it only strengthens the partnership. Um, if there is interest, we have really, really helpful um, documents that have sort of showcased what has happened in the process with previous projects. Um, and a really, really easy step-by-step -step process to, to borrow materials moving forward, um, which has really been the goal throughout the development of the Go Human campaign. Um, I think it's taken on a new shape over the course of the years, um, and we have sort of figured out our own lessons learned to make it as easy as possible to facilitate um, a, a project like a demonstration project and the ways that we can provide resources, provide support, um, and provide direction if needed. Great. Uh, does anyone else have an answer for that too? Yeah, this is Alexis and, and, and um, Melanie and Eric touched on this, but I think part, and, and it's great that SCAG has also sort of the, the um, templates from the previous ones that they can share with folks. Because I think one of the things for us that was really helpful and what Melanie and Eric touched on was the need for coordinating with your other county or other jurisdictional departments. So bringing together public works with the parks department, with planning, uh, with your you know business development um, section of the house and, um, and others along with the elected officials. So for our um, demonstration project, definitely the leadership of the local elected official was really helpful to help bring everybody together and get folks into the same room and really create a work plan for how we were going to get this all done. Um, it was helpful that SCAG, you know, provided us kind of a timeline for, you know, when certain things should be happening. Um, but there was a lot of coordinating just between um, the different government partners and then also engaging some of the local nonprofits in the community to help with outreach to all the local businesses. Um, and getting, you know, community members involved in helping with that outreach. So we had, you know, I think SCAG originally scoped out like four meetings. We probably had a lot more than four meetings to plan our, <laughs> our one day event, but there was sort of like, you know, four big milestone meetings and a lot of smaller meetings in, in between. But um, I think having, having someone, and ideally that's the elected leader, but, you know, someone within city staff that can help bring all the right partners to the table, both within and outside government is a, is a starting point. Great. Do Melanie or Eric have input on that? Uh, my next question uh, is 
actually for those who've put on the project, um, were there any surprising or unlikely supporters uh, and partners that were involved in your events? Uh, this is Melanie. Um, we have a real active teen action committee um, at each of the community centers and they have become increasingly more engaged in active transportation conversations and they came out even though the community center is probably a mile and a half two miles away and it's in a disadvantaged community they came in mass to support the project to try out the bicycle facilities to provide input um, part of that was driven by the recreational staff who um, who really encouraged them I don't know they, they make points for something I'm not quite sure so they got extra points in order to, to come to this event to try and support the effort and I, I found that, that they were a surprising group because um, oftentimes it's it's difficult to get high school age kids to to be truly engaged, but they were truly engaged. Great. It, yeah, I would say here in Palm Desert, we, we had a couple good, great community partners. I had mentioned that the uh, Desert Rec District had really helped us program the entire day. Because our event did start pretty much first thing in the morning from eight uh, to about 6 p.m. Um, and their ability to program the space, uh, keep kids engaged, um, really help bring out a lot of younger families, which was great. Um, but I think our, our two biggest uh, supporters aside from the rec district was um, our, our local cog out here, uh, the Gachala Valley Association of Governments was working on the CV link project. And they saw this as another way to really promote that. And by promoting their CV link at the event, um, they brought a, out a whole nother group of supporters that then learned about uh, the San Pablo improvements and how that helped with alternative transportation. And so really the, the two projects um, um, are similar and they, there is a lot of cross pollination there uh, that brought out a lot more support for these types of improvements to come in. Great, thank you. Uh, any other questions from the audience on the webinar out in the uh, on out in the Zoom land. All right. Uh, these uh, projects that have been shown to us today show how uh, educating the community uh, brings together the community and can actually uh, be a force to make some change in the infrastructure of our cities. So uh, I, I know that there's a lot of a lot more information that you may want to find out about. So we have information available on the Go Human campaign our Go Human website. Uh, this webinar ends our third of a four-part series of webinars to, that aims to address those priorities expressed during our workshops, including data, local implementation, education and encouragement, and statewide policy and legislation, which is the next webinar that's happening tomorrow, um, September 19th at 10 a.m., uh, if you're interested in participating in that webinar, you can go to the Go Human website, which is gohumansocal.org. And if you go to that website as well, uh, you will see the what I have circled here in yellow uh, to take the pledge to commit to safety. There are a number of actions that you can take as a, a city or as a community-based organization to commit to taking measures to make your community safer. Uh, these webinars uh, will be on the Go Human website, so you'll be able to refer back to them. Um, and again, that link is the gohumansocal.org. You'll be able to go to that website and all the links to the webinars will be available there. And uh, that is, uh, well, there are also many resources that are available through SCAG. Uh, part of the reason that we're sharing this information is to uh, spark your interest in the resources that are available through SCAG. Their mission is to support 
the cities uh, of Southern California. And uh, if you go to the link that's shown here on the screen, you'll be able to find out other resources that are available. Um, there, you can look at Vision Zero planning, you can host a pop-up safety demonstration, uh, you can implement a safety outreach campaign uh, to help make a difference. And like I said before, you can sign up to receive more information to take the pledge. Uh, SCAG will be uh, presenting their safety draft technical report. Uh, it's releasing on November 7th and will be available for public comment through January 15th, 2020. And this will include strategies proposed by SCAG for local jurisdictions, uh, SCAG's high injury network interactive version and safety best practices in our region. So there's more to come from SCAG in relation to traffic safety. So uh, that ends our webinar and uh, we appreciate you participating today. If you would like more information, you can reach out to Hina whose uh, email address is on the screen. And uh, you can always go to the website for more information and also to contact SCAG there. So thank you and have a good afternoon.